In MathCAD, you have operators for summation and also products, or to be more specific, products of a sequence, and they are very useful. So let's take a look at them. So for example, let's say that we add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Well, we can easily calculate that to be a value of 21. But we can also do this using a summation operator. So let me click on my worksheet. Then I will go to the operators drop down from the math tab. And then in the calculus group, here we have the summation operator, which is a capital Greek letter sigma. But the keyboard shortcut is control shift and the dollar sign or control shift and the four key on your keyboard. But let me click on it. When I do that, I get the sigma on my worksheet with three different placeholders. And the bottom placeholder is for a starting value. And you can use a local definition operator or local variable for this. So for example, I will use a variable called I. And then you can set that to its initial value. In this case, I will use e the equal sign. And let's start with a value of 1. And then I will use the arrow key on the keyboard to cycle through. Right now, the sigma is highlighted. Let me arrow to the right again. And now I have the top placeholder. So here I can specify the ending value. This time I will use 6, like in the example above. And once more, I will right arrow. And now I have what I want to evaluate. In this case, let's just do our local variable i. And then I will click on the equal sign to evaluate it. And that is equal to a value of 21 like we have up here. But of course, you can do more complicated ones. So this time, let me use the keyboard shortcut. I will use Control, Shift, and then the 4 key. And let's do I. And instead of using the equal sign on the keyboard, be aware that there is also an operator for local definition. If you go to the operators drop down underneath the calculus group, here we have this equal sign. And as it says in the tooltip, this is used in summation and product. So let me use the equal sign from there. And once again, we will go to one. And I will use my right arrow, right arrow, and six. And then we can write another expression. For example, let's do i squared. So I will do i and then shift six to get the upper carrot. And let's put in squared and then the equal sign. And this is equal to 91. So just like you have summations, you also have a product operator. So for example, one times two times three times four times five times six is equal to 720. But rather than typing all that out, we can use our operator. So let's go to the operators drop down. And here is the product operator. And from the keyboard shortcut, we can see that this is control shift and the pound sign. But I will click on it from here. And once again, we can use a local variable for the start. This time, just to use something different, I will use J. Now we'll just use the equal sign on the keyboard. Let's go J from one. And then I will write arrow till I get to the top placeholder, and then six, and then right arrow for what I want to evaluate. This time it's going to be J, and then I will do equals, and we get the same value. And just like before, we can do that for any kind of function that we write. So let me use Control Shift, and then the number three. Let me just do the same thing, J equals one, and then right arrow to a value of six, and then let's do j squared and then equals. And we can see that's a big number. Let's go to the math formatting tab and change the result format from general to decimal. And we can see what it is. So that's the basics behind summation and products. But there are a few more advanced things that you can do with this. So let me scroll down on my worksheet. And let me show you a few things I've set up. So I have created a function f of x, and this is equal to 4x plus 1. Very straightforward. 
I've also created a range variable, and the range variable goes from zero to five, and so it has the value zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I've also created a vector, in other words, it's a matrix with a single vertical column, and I put some numbers in there. They happen to be prime numbers. And be aware, even though I use whole numbers, you are not restricted to whole numbers. Of course, you could use numbers with decimals or you could use constants or anything that you want to use in here. And I've done a couple of summations. So for example, I've calculated the summation of the first six elements, which would actually correspond to the range variable, zero to five. And I've done the same thing for the product. And here's the entire vector, the summation and the product. And by the way, let's take a look at evaluating the function for the vector. Let's do f of vector is equal to, and there we have these different values as well. And you can verify that if you want to. But anyhow, let's take a look at some of the different ways of using this with a with both the vector and also with uh, not filling out all the different placeholders so for example let's let's try like what i was doing before and let's use all the different placeholders so let's start off with a summation so i will go to the math tab operators and then summation and first I'm just going to use the range variable i for all of these just because it is equal easy and then i is going to be equal to and let's go from zero and what i want to go over is all the different elements of this and you could count this so for example one two three four five six seven eight nine there are nine elements in here but i know that the origin starts with zero so this would actually go to a maximum value of eight. But let's say you had a really, really long vector in here. Rather than counting manually, what you can do is you can use the rows operator. So for example, if I go to the matrices and tables tab, we have vector matrix functions. Here is the rows function, which will return the number of rows in a vector. So let me type in vec for the name of the vector. But again, I need to subtract one from it. And then let's type in for what we are going to evaluate. Let's grab vector sub i. And for the sub, well, you could use the index operator, which is, where are you? This one right here, which is also the keyboard shortcut of the left bracket. And I will do vector sub i, and this is going to be equal to 100. So this is exactly what we had here when we summed up all the different elements. And similarly, we can use functions for this. So let me actually let me save myself some time and effort. I'm just going to copy this control C after I select it, and then control V just so I don't have to fill in all the different stuff. Let me just put my cursor to the left of the vec, and then put in F parentheses, and I got the I in the wrong place. Let me go back over here and just manually place it in. Okay, I use the keyboard shortcut. And so if we were to sum up all these different values, well, it would have a value of 409. So again, here was a situation where I filled in both the bottom and the top placeholders. But you don't have to fill in all the placeholders. Let's take a look at a, another example, and one where we just want to evaluate over this range variable. In other words, just for, um, for the elements zero through five. And so, this time, let me, let me move down one spot. I will use the keyboard shortcut. Actually, let me do the product operator of this stuff too. Let me do Control Shift Four, and let's go from i equals zero. Oops, I did the wrong one. Let me go in here and I'll just go to the math tab. Let's go to operators and change it to product from there. Okay, so let's do the product operator from i equals zero to rows of vec minus one. And then we will evaluate vec sub i 
is equal to, and we get this number. Let me click on it. Let's go to math formatting and change the format from general to decimal. And here we can see that, hey, this is the same as this value over here. And we can do the same thing. It's time to make it easy. I'm just going to copy this one, control C. And then let's do control V. And I will click in here. And then let's go to the math tab, operators, change that to a product. And we can see that this is a really, really big number. Let's go to math formatting, change it from general to decimal as well. Look at all those digits. Okay, so this is where we used all the different placeholders, but we don't have to use all the different placeholders. So for example, let's say that we just wanted to evaluate this over the range. Well, let me go to control shift three. Oops. Ah, let's do the product first. Okay, let's do over range. And then I will right arrow. And then instead of filling anything up at the top, let me go here and type in VEC and then use my matrix index of range. And this is equal to, and a big number. Let me change the formatting from general to decimal. So this is equal to this. And let's copy this. Control C and then Control V. And I'm going to change this from the product operator to the summation operator and then click over here. So, this, if we're doing the sum of the vector over this range variable, this is equal to 41. And hey, we can verify this over here as well. And so, here's the situation where we only use the bottom placeholder, but there are situations where you don't need to use any placeholder. Let's say I just wanted to sum all of this or we wanted to uh, sum the function of it. Well, we can just use our operator. Let me go to operators and then use summation. And I'm going to write arrow, right arrow, right arrow. And here I'm just going to type in the name of the vector. Let's type in vec. And this is going to be equal to 100. Hey, so we got the same result here as we got here where we are just summing the entire vector. And the same thing we can do our, let me position over here. Let me do the summation, control shift four, and I'm gonna write arrow and we could do F of vec, oops, oops. Boy, I screwed that up, let me correct that. Delete that. Okay, equal sign, there we go. This is equal to 409. And let's do the product operator, control shift three, and I'm going to do the product of vec is equal to, and once again, let's go to the math formatting tab and change from general to decimal. And so there we have that. I'm trying to get this all on the same line. Let me move this stuff over. Okay, a little more space because I know the last one's going to be big. Okay, and so let's do, you know what, let me just scroll down. Let's just do our product operator, control shift three, and then let me move over and do F of vec, and then the equal sign, and change our math formatting once again to decimal. And we can see that this is the same as this. So that's how you can save yourself time and effort. Uh, if you are just evaluating an entire vector or a function of an entire vector. So all this stuff about summations and products or products of a sequence are important because in math, this is used in limits and integrals but where you can get really, really practical use out of it, and I'm not saying that calculus is not practical, uh, where you can get really good use out of this in MathKit is using this with imported data. So for example, if you read in data from a file, you can process it. And especially you can use this with conditionals like the if function so that you can perform some pretty advanced data analysis. So there you have it. That's how you can use summations and products.